Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. You are audible. Okay. How long will it take? Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Eminent speaker, sir. HOD sir, faculty members and dear participants, a very good morning everyone and welcome to the fourth day of our faculty development program on industrial wastewater management IWWM 2023 organized by Department of Chemical Engineering, Holdia Institute of Technology in association with IQSC HIT Holdia. Now we are going to start our technical session. Our today's speaker is Professor Dr. Amitabha Bandhapadhan. Professor Bandhapadhyay is a Professor of Chemical Engineering at University College of Science and Technology, University of Calcutta. He earned his B.Tech in Chemical Technology from the University of Calcutta. Later, he earned his M.Tech and Ph.D. in Chemical Engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Prior to the, his uh, university position, for the last 15 years, he spent more than 10 years in a senior position at the West Bengal Pollution Control Board. He also spent eight years working with other academic institutions and with organizations addressing environmental engineering and process formulations. He has been a visiting faculty member of School of Environmental Resources and Development, ASEAN Institute of Technology, AIT, Bangkok, Thailand, under the faculty secondment program nominated by the MHRD Government of India. He was the official representative of Calcutta University associate member institution in the regional network of Southeast Asia for cooperation within the scope of German Academy Exchange Service under Excellence Center for Exchange and Development. For the project Sustainable Water Management in Developing Countries, he has visited several countries for various conferences and environmental training and research program. Professor Bandhapadda has published more than 80 articles in international and national journals of repute. He has served as one of the topical editors in the water and environmental engineering section of the international journal Clean Soil Air Water published by Willie Blackwell. He also serves on the editorial boards and advisory boards of several international journals important to greenhouse gases, science and technology of Willie Blackwell. He has been one of the guest editor for CO2 capture published by the Elsevier in separation and purification technology. He has received a number of awards for his research, including the outstanding paper award 2012 for an article published by the Springer in Clean Technology and Environmental Policy, the Institution Prize 2009, and the Professor S.C. Singh Gold Medal 2000 from the Institution of Engineers India. He has edited the book entitled Carbon Capture and Storage CO2 Management Technology, published by Apple Academic Press. In addition to serving as a member 2013 to 2015 of the state level Environmental Impact Assessment Authority, Jharkhand, constituted by the Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India, he is associated with a number of professional societies, including Climate Change Research Institute, as a member. Asian Council of Science Editor as a member, the Institution of Engineers India as a Life Fellow and Chartered Engineer India, Water Indian Work Works Associated as a Life Fellow, Indian Institution of Chemical Engineering as a Life Member, Air Pollution Control Association of India as a Life Member, Indian Association for Environmental Management as a Life Member, Institution of Public Health Engineering. India as a life member, so on and forth. Today, he will be giving his lecture on strategies of industrial wastewater treatment. Now, I would like to request Professor Bandhapada to start his lecture. Over to you, sir. Sir, please.
Sir, please turn on your microphone. So can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You are audible now. So the, uh, in the introduction, it is important to let you know that the industrial wastewater normally contains pollutants. And uh, the pollutants depends on the uh, various processes. It may be biodegradable or it may not be biodegradable. And it may contain also toxic pollutants. And this wastewater, you cannot discharge it directly into the water bodies or sewer or land for agriculture. And before that, some treatment is necessary to remove the pollutants. In this slide, the, the, the strategies are required for wastewater treatment. The strategies that impact the minimizing the industrial wastewater, industrial water pollution. What are the strategies generally? Uh, used in uh, various countries. One is end of pipe technology that you know that end of pipe technology means after process operation, wastewater is generated and it is being treated in the wastewater treatment plant. Next come the waste minimization approaches within the factory premises. The, uh, the waste that is generated is to be minimized. There are various methods how to minimize the wastewater. Then wastewater management between factory outlet and discharge point or end users. After generation of the wastewater and it is coming out from the uh, plant boundary and it is necessary to segregate the wastewater from uh, the uh, uh, various processes and domestic wastewater. Then comes the monitoring for compliance assurance. Before final discharge, periodic as well as regular monitoring is necessary to ensure that the discharged treated wastewater meeting the standards of the regulatory authorities. Now let us take up the uh, various uh, strategies one after another. The end of pipe wastewater treatment is this approach is on site, means within the plant boundary. There should be a centralized treatment system in which the wastewater is treated. Effluent discharge standard ordinarily define the level of treatment required and depending on the existence and stringencies of legislation. Sometimes the discharge standards are changed in uh, different, different countries and making it more stringent than what it was earlier on. Uh, this is based on the pollution load and many other factors uh, to uh, avoid the degradation of the environment. This level can range from none at all to extensive use of end of pipe technologies. This is the uh, two extreme limiting conditions that remove a wide variety of pollutants. There are incidences of lack of ability to undertake compliance assurance programs. Hmm. That means industries are not ready to uh, take up the compliance assurance program. To enforce a compliance assurance, pollution cost has been evolved in our country. The pollution cost is largely being practiced. At the end, I will take up a few examples. End of pipe technologies tend to transform waste from one form to that of the another and do not contribute towards waste minimization. That means after wastewater treatment at the end of the pipe, what we are doing is that the, the in the liquid major major liquid stream, the pollutants are transformed into or shifted to other phase. Huh? Very conventionally, we can say that it will be transformed into the solid sludge. So form is changed, but it is not in fact minimized. Now comes the waste minimization approach. Whatever, what is the uh, 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 your deficiency in end of pipe treatment technology is taken care of here. Minimizing the waste is to avoid generation of waste. That means the, 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 the production of waste is to be reduced at first place. It can be done uh, uh, by one of the uh, main routes is to 
reuse as much as the remaining waste as possible by source reduction as well as on and off site reuse and recycling that means whatever raw materials is being used the 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 uh, uh, keeping in view that the waste material will be less a reduction in a reduction of volume weight or hazardous nature of a waste prior to or during the production process uh, these are the uh, source reduction sir, technique sir uh, yes sound is some, some problem in the sound Hello. Can you hear me? Can yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. But some sound is coming from your side, sir. Dear participants, please turn off your microphone and your camera. Somebody else's microphone is open, I think. Dr. D. Bhinkote, sir, please turn off your camera. Now it is okay, sir. You can continue. Sir. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. And then, then comes the amounts of waste produced are reduced. And finally, the quality of waste generated is improved. That will be less injurious if discharged into common sewer system or into water course. One of the waste minimization approach is the source reduction. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Please continue. Now, what's going on? Power board. Now, what's going on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And source reduction, uh, the potential for avoiding energy and raw material consumption. As well as waste production. Source reduction with respect to hazardous industrial waste is to reduce the volume as well as waste and reduction of toxicity. This is very important. Conventionally, most of the people are unaware of that reduction of toxicity, and that is causing uh, enormous pressure to the environment. So, source reduction means not only the uh, reduction of waste in terms of volume or weight, uh, but in terms of reduction of toxicity. That means the uh, various uh, toxicity levels of the uh, waste material should be reduced. There are two types of source reduction. One is source control and another is product change. Yeah. If you control the source, that will also lead you to source reduction and to less waste production. Another way is to change the product. That will also reduce the, there are uh, scopes to reduce the, uh, 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 the waste material. Hmm. If we change the product. These are the industrial source reduction measures. Uh, the left hand side column reads the types of source reduction measures and the second column is for the description or example if, now let us take one by after, one after another the product changes means to reduce the waste as well as toxicity associated with a product's use then product substitution substitute water based paints for solvent based paints uh, 
the solvent based paints if if such kinds of paints are uh, less used uh, and uh, water soluble paints are used in a larger fraction that will lead to uh, some benefic effects on the environment because you know the most of the solvents used in the paints industry are proven carcinogen uh, so the utilization of that solvent is detrimental for long term use then product concentration the concentration of the product for example powder detergents requiring uh, less packaging hmm. so then comes source control uh, here it is associated with the products manufacture to reduce the waste and toxicity material change input it will also material used uh, whatever the material input material that means the uh, raw material that is to be changed then you can uh, get the benefit of uh, source uh, reduction and less waste production material purification whatever raw material you are using if it contains a lot of uh, unwanted materials that will lead to lot of waste generation so uh, higher grade or high uh, uh, purity materials are to be used for example higher grade of crude oil during refining uh, that reduces the amount of impurities that must be removed material substitution substitute to water based cleansers for solvent based cleansers it is almost similar to that of your product substitution product substitution as well as a material substitution material substitutions uh, falls under the category of your input material or raw material substituting the raw material in in case of green synthesis green material utilization it comes under that category also then change in technology if you change the technology you may get better impact on the uh, uh, overall processes uh, process change equipment change and process automation these are the three types in terms of your change in technology process change means improves the efficiency of chemical reactions uh, the more efficient is the chemical reaction the more will lead you to the better production use of mechanical scrapping for cleaning rather than solvents cleaning sometimes used by uh, solvent uh, a material adhered on an equipment surface now instead of scrapping or remove it by mechanical operation if you add some solvent that will easily remove the material but that will uh, lead to generation of waste so change in equipment or change in method of operation is also important process automation that will optimize your yield automatically then comes good housekeeping it is extremely important under the perspective of indian uh, uh, industrial operations it is here where majority of the industries are producing lot of waste unnecessarily due to very bad housekeeping management and personal practices and offer employee education programs bonuses and awards to encourage employees to reduce waste it is extremely important whatever the methods process raw materials are used in indian industries are standardized well stabilized well settled uh, your processes so there is a uh, cell of necessity to change all those to reduce the waste uh, material but if you visit in industry you will understand that why good housekeeping is essential and important in the many of the times the regulators are gui uh, guiding them advising them to concentrate on good housekeeping the lack of uh, application of mind lack of dedication lack of knowledge lack of awareness are mainly responsible for very bad housekeeping leading to lot of waste generation then waste stream segregation waste stream segregation is very important for example in the complex industrial operation like say for example refinery or other petrochemical plants or pesticide plant from different different units if you treat minimum treatment for such waste and then accumulate it and then final treatment and discharge it that will help a lot say for example a uh, 
waste an industry is generating uh, several waste uh, st water stream from many uh, uh, process operations. Now all these wastewater streams, if you mix together, then sometimes it may so happen the treatment, uh, rendering treatment will become economically not acceptable and environmentally it will also be very much difficult to handle. Why say for example out of 10 waste stream, one stream co containing a low volume waste but high uh, concentration of cyanide and all these streams are more or less having similar volume of waste, other nine streams do not have any toxic component like cyanide. Now, the moment you are adding or mixing all these uh, streams together, then 10 stream coming into a common equalization tank or a common mixing chamber, all the streams are now consisting of cyanide. Now, large volume of waste, maybe uh, small, the concentration due to dilution cyanide may reduce, but that is not below the permissible limit. Then comes the problem. Huge volume of waste, you will have to treat it for cyanide removal. That is extremely cost intensive. But instead, if the cyanide is removed independently in its own stream and then make it free from cyanide and then mix it with other nine waste streams. That will help a better uh, practice for wastewater treatment. Then this waste stream segregation is extremely important. Then comes inventory control. The material inventory before expiry dates, that has to be taken into consideration. Loss prevention, this uh, spillage or leakage, uh, due, uh, out, uh, due to which there are plenty of uh, losses as well as generation of waste also. Cost accounting, the waste treatment and disposal cost should be allocated directly to the departments or group that generate the waste. Otherwise, one cannot make the uh, industry responsible for treatment of the waste in a better way. Then comes the waste minimization approaches, recycling and reuse. Recycling is possible both on-site and off-site. Recycling, it requires uh, all the processing steps like physical, chemical and biological. On the other hand, reuse either its original purpose or in a new role, it uh, could be reused. And both of these produ <coughs> waste products are reduced under the head of recycling and reuse and contributing less towards the pollution. Recycling and reuse of wastewater reduces also the freshwater requirements and that reduces the water tax. Recycling and reuse of materials. What are these, uh, these materials? On the demand side value of raw material inputs tends to be higher and their availability scarce are. Thus making recycled and reused materials more attractive. <clears throat> On the supply side, the labor cost associated with separating mixed weights are extremely low. And thus there has been very little empirical work conducted to date on recycling and reuse by industry in developing countries like India or some other uh, economically weaker countries. Next comes the waste stream management. It is not only wastewater treatment, it is not the source correction, it is not only the your, uh, your waste minimization alone. It takes into account the, all these factors and it introduces the appropriate intervention between the source and the rivers and users. That means the wastewater generation, uh, uh, say for example, after treatment or without treatment, you are discharging to water bodies. Ultimately, uh, following the gradient, it will flow down to the river. Or it can be used in the agriculture or for some other purpose. Wastewater chain under control of regulatory agencies in general and simple low cost interventions needed that could improve waste characteristics and quality in tandem. Mixing of industrial and domestic waste uh, should be prevented uh, to uh, deteriorate uh, in order to avoid deterioration of the water course. Waste disposal infrastructure in developing cities are common 
as it is used for a longer period of times and waste management is of recent origin industrial siting policy for industrial clusters are extremely necessary to accommodate expanding cities because there are very small small units in some municipal bodies under some municipal bodies and rendering treatment is difficult now if you put all these small small units into an industrial cluster then rendering treatment is easier so that the uh, water bodies are not get polluted uh, the, the, the the in general these small units are discharging their effluents without rendering any treatment into the public sewers and thus domestic wastewater is getting adulterated with these contaminants and finally leading to river and even sometimes people are using it for agriculture also utilizing this polluted wastewater huh. there are a lot of examples lot of experiences you can uh, share with other industries also so therefore segregation involves parallel drainage networks to isolate waste from domestic sewage it is an expensive alternative but it is necessary to protect the environment strategies for waste stream segregation is a greatest impact in situations of developing countries where industries do not apply any of these strategies there are some motivations and there are some barriers also the implementing waste minimization program can help to reduce production costs waste disposal cost pollution on site therefore these three issues must have to be uh, followed and industries should be vibrated with positive outlook and giving them the awareness so that these are the issues that they can benefit uh, they can be benefited by waste minimization procedures and they will automatically concentrate this on this waste minimization program and it can improve a company's corporate image also or facilitate compliance with existing and future pollution regulations there are multiple benefits are there these are the motivations industries should be motivated periodically and as a matter of fact the regulatory agencies are uh, for a over a, over a period of years for several decades are trying to motivate the industries for pollution control very important barriers are economic information technological regulatory these are the four barriers more relevant to developing countries like us and are easily understood as against attitudinal and physical this to our encounter as frequently in developing countries as they are in developed countries also and some need some explanation attitudinal and barriers arising from the following factors like management is reluctant to take risk most of the industries in india are having facing this crisis management is unwilling to consider changes in existing manufacturing process due to fear as that may affect the product quality and many medium scale industries the management is not at all educated they are having money they invest and started producing and they don't want to listen the uh, technical persons <coughs> and that is the one of the major reasons the unwillingness of the management comes into force uh, as a barrier for better waste management practices management is also found to be reluctant to undertake wastewater minimization program and uh, many of the industries install some toys some puppets as pollution control equipment it is it can be seen for air pollution control devices it can be also seen for wastewater treatment facilities uh, they do not have follow any standard procedure they are simply put some uh, idiot box inside the industry and uh, regulator agencies they show that this is their wastewater treatment plant or their air pollution control system whether that is at all operating or not that is not their bothersome they have invested that they are ends their matter because they understood that it is uh, the, the the pollution control equipment or wastewater treatment plant at their overheads it is usage of money as a result of which they are least bothered about the uh, uh end of the treatment and they least bother about the environment uh, the physical barriers are for the implementation of wastewater minimization program 
The first one is the problem of having insufficient quantities of wastewater to justify internal use or external collection. If the wastewater generation, the quantity is insufficient, you cannot have justify it for internal use. Then comes the lack of sufficient storage space to accumulate wastewater for collection. Third one is the lack of sufficient land for on-site treatment. All these problems tend to be more significant for micro and small units. That is what I was giving you an example for the small scale industries like dyeing bleaching industries all over West Bengal. There are many areas where dyeing bleaching industries are operated uh, in uh, residential buildings like uh, Chatta, Kalikapur area in South Chubbish Parugana, Mohasdala area, huh? and then uh, your Metia Buruj. These are the areas, geographical locations, where small small units are operating and they are suffering these three specific types of barrier. Huh? So they are unable to treat their waste in a much better way. Incentives to internal internalize strategies that minimize industrial pollution. The, the scope of the, the, there are scopes for uh, giving in, incentives to attract the attention of the management for installation of wastewater minimization strategies. The first comes the information dissemination, this education and training, enhancement capacity building program. The can be uh, organized for educating and training the people, creation of a waste exchange program, and distribution of technical information bulletins. The final support for the capital expenditure and equipment that can include matching grants, subsidies, low or no interest loans, tax deductions, or tax credits. This financial support, there are examples for air quality management all over Kolkata by Indo-Canadian facility project where baby boilers has to force to install a good many of pollution control devices or to fuel change under Indo-Canadian uh, uh, joint venture project where Canadian government supported the uh, financial part for these activities to the small units. Then comes the regulatory instruments. Sometimes the the, the punitive measures for the violators are necessary for uh, not rendering effective uh, wastewater treatment. Award giving programs, there are they are where the, 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 the environmental award program organized by the Pollution Control Board, West Bengal Pollution Control Board. Now it has, I do not hear nowadays, to give public recognition to outstanding wastewater minimization efforts by individual companies. The Pollution Control Board was organizing this program with the help of some of the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, the uh, it is not only applicable for the uh, wastewater treatment plant, it is air pollution control, water pollution control, then uh, zero liquid discharge, then uh, minimum water consumption, uh, then, then hazardous waste disposal facility, lot of things, small, medium, large scale industries, local bodies, municipalities as well also up, up, um, under this uh, network. So award giving programs also encourage the industries for such things. Then comes eco-leveling program. The, the various countries like Germany, Canada, Japan, Austria, France, uh, they are there for eco-leveling program. This can be encouraged to manufacture products and thus use production process generating less waste. And these products you can uh, export to other countries. Eco-leveling, uh, the product is eco-level means you can easily uh, export it. Industrial wastewater exchange program. Off-site recycling, for example, off-site recycling and reuse that facilitate transfer of wastewater between a wastewater producing company and a company that can use that wastewater as a material. Actually, say for example, company A is producing wastewater. It is not unable to treat it wastewater. Company B is ready to use that wastewater as its raw material. One example I can give you, in the United States, British Petroleum is the largest refinery in the Texas, uh, under, the, under the side of the Gaveston Beach. Now in India, the refinery, the spent caustic 
is taken into the F1 treatment plant and retina treatment. In the United States, this is pain caustic, they do not take it into the F1 treatment plant. This pain caustic, they collect it and send it to, to, to the outside the plant boundary, the third party, and they will recover the valuables. Uh, there are plenty of organics and they will recover it and sell it. So these are the differences between two countries in handling this industrial exchange program. The public disclosure system, it is very weak in our country nowadays, effective for encouraging waste reduction. The companies are required to provide annual reports to the government. And these annual reports are to be uploaded by the government, mentioning the values they have submitted. And the from the perspective of uh, environmental aspects, all the parameters are to be uploaded. Now, if the polluting industries are there and they are to be supposed to be uh, directed to improve their uh, effluent management practices, likewise other uh, aspects of pollution. Sometimes government may publish names of worst polluting industries in a top 10 list or something similar. But here the pollutant parameters are uh, written in the uh, plant gate or put up in a notice board in front of the plant gate so that anybody can look around it. But that data should be periodically upgraded, but seldom these things is used. Effective waste management strategies in developed countries have a high proportion of small and very small quantity generators. Water is implication more difficult to control waste movements arising from such generators and more difficult for such generators to initiate waste reduction measures. Low waste disposal cost means less incentive to reduce to waste. A high level of off-site waste receive, reuse and recycling. And it lead to health risks associated with disposal of hazardous industrial waste, mixing with domestic waste and discharge to rivers and sewers, lower sol solid waste disposal. Little or no information available on waste quantities and type. And it will lead to difficulty to identify the types and number of disposal facilities needed. No facilities or limited facilities for hazardous waste disposal. That means hazardous waste are dumped into water courts or land or mixed with municipal solid waste landfills. Solid and liquid waste streams are frequently combined and leading to more difficult to manage mixed waste. Few or no award schemes in existence for encouraging waste reduction treatment and that lead to less incentive to reduce waste or seek public recognition as cleaves industries. Then comes the low awareness among producers about their hazardous waste, resulting into improper disposal of hazardous waste. If you do not know that this contains hazardous components, then you will simply throw it outside. That lead to environmental deterioration. Then comes low awareness by the general public. General public put less pressure on government and industry to take action. Stockpiles of waste awaiting for proper treatment or disposal lead to risk of leaks from storage containers and storage spaces, runs out of potential for illegal disposal, limited technical resources and limited financial resources. Both of these two hindered implementation of technical solution and financial facilities. Few or no regulations on industrial waste. If regulations are few or there are no regulations, then that will lead to catastrophe or disaster. Cases considered for levying environmental compensation. What are these factors? The environmental compensation, it comes after the waste. Say, for example, wastewater is discharged and it has caused deterioration to the environment, and then compensation should be calculated. So, discharge is violating the consent conditions, means standards or consent limits. Consent condition means consent to operate in our country and consent to establish not compliance of directions issued and then environmental compensation is put into place international avoidance of intentional avoidance of data submission if industry intentionally avoids submission of data or data manipulation or effluent monitoring system then environmental compensation will be uh, levied on industries Accidental discharge for short durations is very, very important. There are cases in uh, Holdia also. I have experienced such things from refinery once upon a time in 2002 or 2001. Intentional discharges to the environment 
that means without rendering proper treatment injection of treated or partially treated effluent to the groundwater as a recharge in any case minimum environmental compensation shall be rupees 5000 per day in our country for repeated violations of environmental compensation may be increased on an exponential basis say for example two times on first repetition four times on second repetition so on and forth if the operations of the industry are inevitable and continues its operation say for example power plant its operation is inevitable you cannot stop it you cannot close it down beyond for say example for three months then environmental compensation may be increased by two four eight times for second third and fourth quarter respectively if operations are inevitable beyond 12 months sometimes it is necessary to issue closure order besides environmental compliance compensation industry may be prosecuted through its manager managing director or executives physically or issuance of closure order whenever it is required as per the environmental protection act 1986 as amendment environmental compensation can be calculated from the following expression it can be a product of several factors. Let us take the factors like pollution index of industrial sector. The red, orange, green category, there, the industries are categorized according to their pollution potentials. The highest pollution potential is for red category of industries, then comes orange and last comes the green category of industries. Values of PI are given 60 to 100, 41 to 59, 21 to 40. The average values of PI is given there in the extreme right column. Then comes the N, is the number of days of violation took place. It may be 20 days, 30 days, 50 days. It is to be calculated between the day of violation observed and the direction of compliance issued. R is a factor for environmental compensation and in rupees. The average value of 250 is taken in case of violation. Scale of operation is represented by a fact its value is 100 is it is for micro and small scale it is 0.5 medium scale 1 and large scale 1.5 location factor it is depends on the based on the city or town population location of industrial units and uh, uh, say for example location factor is 2 for 10 and above of the population in terms of 10 million and above uh, if it is the one to less than 5 million then location factor will be reduced to 1.25. Location factor is taken as 2 for ecologically sensitive areas that should be notified. Say, for example, Sundarban forest area. And for critically polluted areas are not yet decided. It is to be explored in future. These values are calculated and multiplied to get the value of environmental compensation. Industrial inspections for compliance verifications are necessary. Installation of continuous water quality monitoring stations as well as com continuous ambient air quality monitoring stations are necessary. Preparation of comprehensive industry documents on industrial sectors for clean technology. Investigations on environmental damages, preparations of DPRs. Remediation of contaminated sites. Then comes the infrastructure augmentation of local bodies, capacity building programs organized by state pollution control boards and pollution control committees. These are the proposal proposals which may include other schemes also depending on the requirement and that is changed from time to time. And this environmental compensation is uh, developed by the Central Pollution Control Board in our country. The considering the availability of accumulated funds, Central Pollution Control Board finalized the schemes on priority basis to utilize the funds of environmental compliance. Amount of environmental compensation that is necessary will be remediation cost, this number one, the measures for requiring immediate and short term actions, and finally the compensation towards loss of ecology. And that will be utilized exclusively for the purpose of specific site. Whatever cost is collected by the Central Pollution Control Board through the State Pollution Control Board or Pollution Control Committee <clears throat> as against the Environmental Compensation Fund, it is preserved in a specific account and it is utilized for these three areas. You cannot, that fund cannot be used for other purposes. It's as simple as that. 
no industry requiring a fuel treatment plant shall be allowed to operate without etp that means an industry is necessary to install an etp must have to install etp and to operate it without which plant cannot be operated environmental compensation is not a substitute for take actions under environment protection act that means i am continue to discharge effluent untreated manner let the environment to get polluted because i am paying the environmental compensation like polluters to pay principal this is also not allowed this is strictly prohibited units found polluting should be closed or prosecuted as per the acts and rules in force this is the difference what are the conclusions so let us conclude by sharing some uh, uh, valuable uh, action words questions and ideas the extent of discharge of industrial wastewater it say for example in an in an industrial city like holdia or industrial area or industrial cluster or all over in india to reverse or sewers during the next decade whether it is going is it going to increase or decrease and this specific question will lead to how to address these wastewater minimization strategies and in an industrial area all industries put together they should look around they uh, say for example five year plan next five year plan next five year plan that way 25 years plan comprehensive plan should have to be there so that the area will not be disturbed ecologically or environmentally even groundwater abstraction is necessary for some industries now for a period of 25 years what will be the status of the groundwater so what is the planning to recharge groundwater and here it comes the zero liquid discharge and the 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 uh, the recycling of a treated wastewater for the plant inside to reduce the fresh water consumption ability to detect and monitor the source of industrially polluted wastewater its disposal concentration of hazardous chemicals in rivers there are <coughs> plenty of good detectors and monitors in our country but seldom these are used for industrial purposes to identify the main barriers for industries in 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 our country the barriers are plenty there are also political barriers there are policy wise barriers so these are the barriers or hindrances uh, to 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 avoid the acceptable strategies to reduce the generation of wastewater and to enhance its recycling practices exploring the information and technical assistance sometimes technical assistance pollution control board seldom assist technically in our country there are a lot of examples the main reason is very dangerous but technical assistance they seldom give they they rely upon uh, uh they, they rely upon the institutes they don't give any technical assistance seldom they give technical assistance uh, <clears throat> sometimes they form a committee and committee suggest that's as a hidden forbidden area and exploring the information on wastewater minimization and recycling techniques this is also very very important and these two tools are an uh, effective instrument to reduce the discharge of industrial wastewater in rivers and sewers to enforce the relevant provisions of the water act in many situations the relevant provisions of these acts are not being enforced properly and many of us are witnessing that also <clears throat> to adopt polluters to pay principle in terms of environmental compensation and it requires good surveillance good inspection good many of uh, application of mind to accord the adopt economic incentives as an effective strategy to encourage wastewater treatment reduction followed by wastewater that means if an industry is treating their wastewater in a better way not only is it to be incentive should be given to them but that should be circulated all among the industries people should know that 
by dint of rendering proper treatment, people get incentive so that that will attract attention. I'm just giving incentive and it is kept under paper, pen and paper and in the file that will not serve the purpose. It has to be circulated. It is to be made to public. Then comes the activity of the NGOs and they should be encouraged as a whistleblower of the society to prevent pollution of water bodies. Many a situations I have received a lot of such examples that how NGOs are active in some parts of our country and they are knocking at the door of the regulators after facing the environmental challenges. For example, your Kumarchok village, there are plenty of complaints. Pollution control board received at that point of time due to browning of paddy field, browning of coconut trees, browning of betel leaves. All of you are residing at Holdia. You must be aware of this issue. And Hindliver Chemicals Limited, they are discharging or emitting fluorides. The fluorides are causing this browning of monocot type of trees and young leaves. And I have measured the fluoride content of these things. They are found significant amount of fluorides on these leaves. This is the control area. Even on water hyacinth, they get brown. Now, this phosphoric acid production plant, they have removed. They are purchasing phosphoric acid from some other place and used it for producing phosphatic fertilizer. However, fluoride emission also took, should took place from the phosphatic fertilizer plant also during its operation. The particulate fluoride and gaseous fluoride will come uh, through the chimneys and it will come into the residence. And this fluoride, after inhalation by the human beings, there are iron deficiencies. It lead to thyroid cancer also. There are other problems. You may check it. There were the physical problems. It may come. Okay. So these are the concluding points stemming out of my presentation. Hmm. If you are having any question, <coughs> you can ask me. These are the references that I have used. Let me show you some references. The, the, the Central Pollution Control Board reference the, for assessing the environmental compensation that I have used. And uh, this present uh, this discussion paper, strategies for minimizing industrial pollution. This is one of the most critical and important article that I have ever seen. I have searched a lot of papers, but I found it very useful for making this presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? So you you may ask. Thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge. I hope our participant will be benefited a lot from this lecture. Okay. Now the session is open for question and answer. We are participating. If you have any question, you can directly ask or you can write in the chat box. Also. OK. Dear participant, if you have any question, you can directly ask. Those who have raised your hand also, you can ask directly. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. I'm not audible. I, I, I cannot hear. Uh, Bit loud, please. Uh, you are audible, sir. Do you have any question? Am I audible to you, sir? If not, then. Am I audible to you, sir? If you, you do not have any question. Yes, audible. OK. Dear partisan, if you have any question, you can da directly ask. Jenny yeah, Dr. Bhadavatya. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Please carry on. Ah. 
Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Dear hmm. participant, if you have any question, you can ask directly. What is your question? Sir, there is no question from the team now. There is no question from the participants. Uh, okay. Anyway, anyway, thank you very much, sir. Thank you once again. Okay. With this, we are ending our today's session here. Tomorrow, we have our fifth and last day of our FDP, and the speaker is Shimoti Songita Sengupta, scientist at Patent Information Center at West Bengal State Council of Science and Technology, Government of West Bengal. She will be giving a lecture on overview of IPR. Now, dear participant, link is live, and it will be active for half an hour from now. Please mark your attendance within half an hour. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.